going on everybody? This is DK Dynamite and tonight we're going to be talking about the trailer and marketing for DLC 4, some new content over in Zombies and new things you may have missed with the marketing for the final round based map in Cold War. Definitely stay tuned but before we jump into that be sure to hit that subscribe button down below and also as a reminder you can save 10% off any order using code Dynamite over at GamerAdvantage.com. Their link is of course down below in the description. This past weekend has been double weapon XP for both Cold War and Warzone so if you guys have any interest in unlocking the Dark Ether camo definitely go ahead and do so since now you can actually use it over in Warzone as well, as you may have saw with the release of Season 5 Reloaded. Now, I also want to ask you guys out there, what would it take for you to accept Outbreak replacing Round Based in future Call of Duties, and what would you want to see added to the mode to really spice things up in comparison to how the mode works here in Cold War? Very curious about your thoughts, go ahead and leave them down below in the comments. Now, first and foremost, I just want to mention that the side melee weapon is a must-use over in Zombies. It's probably one of the craziest starting weapons to use right now in either Round Based or Outbreak. It's broken as shit as you guys may have seen and intentionally as well i mean not only is it fun to swipe around against the zombies but you do get health back from knifing if you upgraded your melee ability using the crystals and you do get a tiny boost jump when using these bad boys along with the return of the infinite black ops 3 slide in case you guys missed that which we haven't seen in a while but it's back and in case you guys are wondering how to unlock the side melee weapon for free if you don't want to buy the spectral side bundle i have a full guide for both cold war and Warzone's numbers event down below in the description that's how you can unlock this brand new weapon. Now, it was confirmed by lead game designer Mark Mesta, I hope I said his name right, that you can now do the Firebase Z first door skip yet again, which did get patched a couple of months ago, unfortunately. Everybody was doing it, but they ended up fixing it, but with the new boost jump you get from the size, you can actually do that yet again. He also went ahead and followed up by saying, sorry if that was a bit cryptic, force of habit, there is at least one way to skip the first door in Firebase Z. If you manage to do it, zombies will spawn from the closed areas, no further changes will be made to make this harder or easier to do so fantastic clarification and it just reminds me of all the little trick people have found over the years and other Treyarch zombies maps they may break the map or an easter egg quest in one way or another but Treyarch realizes that that's what makes the map fun or that's something that's memorable that Treyarch just wouldn't want to ruin another example is the fire staff glitch back from black ops 2 origins that was something that Treyarch definitely knew about the people out there were really enjoying during easter egg speed runs and Treyarch just never touched it but i believe in the remaster during zombies chronicles that version of Origins didn't have a fire staff glitch, but I could be mistaken. I believe Greg FPS posted a video on how to do it as of not too long ago, which I'll put down below in the description as well, in case you guys are interested. But a couple of days ago, we got a new teaser for the final round base map, which I briefly brought up in my big Season 6 DLC breakdown video. We went over everything to expect in the final season. That video is also linked down below. And as I mentioned in that video, this teaser does hold a lot of weight. There's a lot being hinted at here. And first and foremost, this giant trap for what seems to be a giant boss we're going to face in the red light green light facility the forsaken so the forsaken is going to be huge probably on par with legion and outbreak even orda maybe even bigger than both of those guys combined we're not too sure on this but when it comes to what's being hinted at there is something blacked out there on the right which people are speculating to be sophia after some photo editing you can get a better glimpse as to what's being hinted at here and is it sophia maybe i think if there's any map that's going to hint or reference the original ether storyline it'll be dlc4 for cold war and that's if there are any major references though i'm assuming that when we get the director reveal as eddie then that's when they'll start referencing what happened in the old ether saga and also especially the end of tagger toen when sam and eddie walked into that light but i always want to make sure i'm clear when i say that craig houston knows exactly what he's doing he played a very integral role in ending the old ether saga so he'll know exactly when the right time is to ever bring up anything old again to bring in fan favorite characters that can help move the current story forward he wouldn't just bring things back for the sake of nostalgia just to build some interest about his new story he's taking a lot of risks with how he's told the new story with black ops cold war and i'm assuming he'll do the same even with vanguard and beyond that with Treyarch's next game but the last time we saw sophia was revelations and she went ahead with maxis closed the multiverse as we knew it and that was all a part of dr monty's plan with the cycle but we actually broke the cycle in black ops 4 and now that everything else was collapsed into the dark ether i'm wondering if she's sitting around somewhere since Garada Krovi essentially never happened when we broke the cycle. So lots of possibilities with how Sophia could be brought back. I mean, it'd be cool if it was her, but... Don't forget, Sophia also didn't invent spears or mechanical robots, so this could be something else that just looks similar. Maybe they reuse some assets to build something new, and it resembles Sophia. We'll just have to wait and see. Now, the exciting news, as you guys probably saw hinted at in today's thumbnail, is Twitter went ahead and confirmed that they've made updates to improve video quality on the platform, 
and starting, it was yesterday, videos you upload to Twitter will appear less pixelated for a better watching experience. Treyarch then went ahead and quote tweeted that and said, next week seems like a good time to put this to the test. So let's go through a quick marketing schedule prediction based on how previous Cold War Zombie maps were marketed. So this week coming up, here's what we're looking at. Monday should be when the Season 6 patch will end up in the PlayStation database in which PlayStation Size will go ahead and report on how big that patch is going to be over on Twitter. So with that being said, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday could also be big days for Season 6 marketing, maybe even a full roadmap reveal in which we'll then get the map name of the final round base map. Now Firebase and Modern Toe-In's reveal trailers were also posted on Thursday days shortly before the releases of those maps. So like they did with Modern Toe and even Firebase, we might end up getting small GIFs or trailer clips posted to different Treyarch social media channels throughout this coming week. And then on Thursday the 30th should be when we get the full reveal trailer of DLC 4. I do want to mention that we're probably going to end up getting another blueprint teaser for the new Wonder Weapon in this last round base map. I want to hear your thoughts down below in the comments. What should the Wonder Weapon be for DLC 4? Something that we may have saw in the past but re-envisioned and recreated to be better? Or something new entirely that we've never seen before in a previous Treyarch Zombie? map really curious on what you guys are thinking Treyarch has done quite a few cool wonder weapons in a lot of different zombies maps and modern total to me really raised the bar with how they do wonder weapons it was such a different system in formats and it's something that they never really tried before so i'm curious if they're going to try that again for this upcoming map or will they go back to a traditional type of weapon that you can only get from the box or through one small side easter egg now in regards to more season six zombies content i'm very curious what else is going to be packed into the update since we got confirmation we aren't getting any more regions added to outbreak and we're probably not going to get another LTM added to round base maps either. We are going to get DLC 4 and maybe some other mystery contents. All we know about besides that is, of course, the 10th and final perk coming to the game. So let me know in the comments as well. What else do you want to see added to the final big zombies update we're going to get in Black Ops Cold War? But also don't forget, it's not the end of the world. Treyarch isn't going anywhere this year or probably for the next. They're going to be working hard on Vanguard zombies and... Who knows what's going to be after that? Modern Warfare 2 Zombies as well, and then their next game after that in 2023. Treyarch has a lot in store for us, but based on how the map is getting marketed so heavily right now, I'm going to say the map is probably going to launch right away at the start of Season 6 on October the 6th, or at the very latest, maybe a couple of days to a week max after that. I don't see it dropping any later than such, considering the Hallow's Eve event in late October is not only going to be one final update for Cold War and the Cold War Integration of Warzone, but then it's going to be marketing Vanguard Zombies as well. So unless they plan on dropping the final round base map in late October and then marketing Vanguard Zombies shortly after that, then I see them spreading things out just a little bit to give us some time to breathe after concluding the Cold War Zombie season and moving on to a whole new Call of Duty entirely. Don't forget that when Season 5 came out, Drive-In was a very suspicious release. It didn't come out at the launch of the season, but instead they ended up dropping it just about, I think it was a week and a half after the start of Season 5. The same case might happen with the final round base map, DLC 4. You never know, but all in all, I personally believe we're going to see the map on October the 6th. Now, I know there have been plenty of rumors about what Vanguard Zombies is going to launch with, whether it's no round base maps, just one, whether it's like an Outbreak Onslaught hybrid, and then we get the first round base map in Season 1. No matter what the case is, wait for official marketing before judging or just having a fit over on Twitter or Reddit. It's just not worth doing that. Be patient for the marketing first, see what happens. But nonetheless, I think people are definitely in for a rude awakening over the next year or two with how Zombies is going to work. People out there may not like Outbreak. You don't have to. It is your right to do so. If you prefer Black Ops 3, Black Ops 4, go play those games. There's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. But with how successful Outbreak has been for this game, then I really don't see Round Base getting any more spotlight than it's already gotten for Cold War. That's just kind of what I'm thinking right now. But it's like I said before, take everything with a grain of salt in terms of any rumors for Call of Duty Vanguard. Considering the rumor we already have that we're getting this Outbreak Onslaught hybrid mode and that's going to replace Round Base for Vanguard, considering that, then I just see them going in a whole new direction with Zombies that ensures innovation and ensures it attracts new players isn't just focusing on the OGs. You guys might not like the sound of that. I definitely understand where you're coming from with it. But if anything, right, if you're worried about a lack of round base maps, I guess the first thing you can say is, well, people should have appreciated Black Ops 4. That game launched with four round base maps and released quite a few other ones after that. So people didn't want that then. I think Activision saw that and said, well, that sets a precedent for how we're going to handle zombies going forward. Let's do less round base, try something a little bit different and see where that goes. But all in all, Treyarch has been in a bit of a pickle for quite some time, working on so many back-to-back -back projects, coming in clutch, helping other devs out. We all know the story with Black Ops 4, what happened with that one, then having to take over COD 2020 from Sledgehammer, make that Cold War, and then right after that, or during that I should say, having to then lead Vanguard Zombies for Sledgehammer again, 
And then who knows what else is after this, whether they help Infinity Ward or Modern Warfare 2 zombies, then they have to clutch up a whole other new Call of Duty for 2023. I mean, Treyarch has not had a break in quite some time, and it's insane, but round of applause to all developers involved in ensuring that we get the best experience possible, even with COVID circumstances, working from home, you know, going through all these changes, cut them some slack, right? If you want to blame Activision or the publisher for not delaying the game, go right ahead, do whatever you want to do. It's your right to do that. But at the very most, show some appreciation to the developers for what they've done for us and what they will continue to do for us as try to innovate a mode that's been around for well over a decade. Now, Outbreak Survival also finally released with an update that came out a couple of days ago alongside the numbers event. And I do want to say, Outbreak Survival definitely is up to the name itself. It's really all about survival. I understand the criticism that the mode isn't that hard considering food drops very often from the zombies. Stim shots are common. You can knife to get your health back if you've upgraded your melee class with skill upgrades. I do get that criticism, and they could make the mode harder, but I'm sure that would piss people off to the point where they just don't want to play it, and the player base could drop dramatically if the mode just wasn't enjoyable. But so far, I think it's a nice challenge, a bit of a change of pace from what we're accustomed to with Outbreak. And yes, in case you guys are wondering, you can do both main quests, Operation Inversia and Operation Excision, while in Outbreak Survival. That was a big criticism for the cranked game modes that we got for round base maps where you just couldn't do anything while playing that mode it was just killing zombies which I guess is fine but people out there definitely want to go for the main easter egg completions considering how easier they are in this game as opposed to some previous ones but I think it's also funny how there are people out there who have complained about Cold War zombies not feeling classic enough because you can't start with the 1911 and I'm like wait a second you can you can have it in your loadout but the fact the game doesn't force you to use it I guess makes people feel like it's not classic zombies, but guess what? This game mode forces you to use the 1911, and you don't have to use it forever. You can swap it out for a box weapon or wall buys, whatever you want, but that's what you start off with at least. You cannot bring a loadout weapon into the game mode, and if you choose a certain class, it'll just give you the field upgrade that you had selected. That's fine. I mean, there's no way to use the side melees in this mode just yet unless they get added to the box. So I guess that's something they might change at some point later. You also can't apply blueprints, but what I will say is that this mode definitely encourages the use of the box and wall buys more than any other version of Cold War Zombies, whether it's round based, regular outbreak. That's the thing, right? That's just my only criticism with how this game does work right now, zombies at least, is there's almost no reason to use the box or wall buys because you just start off with the weapon that you want to use the whole game and then grab a wonder weapon later, boom, that's your two weapons, unless you have mule kick. So this mode actually encourages more classic zombies gameplay than any other part of Cold War. So if anybody's complaining about this mode because they want classic zombies back, this is it right here, but on a whole other level. Now, it's highly unlikely we'll get another Outbreak LTM in Season 6. I mean, I guess it's possible if they're not gonna do anything crazy like a new region to Outbreak, but I'm certain that in Treyarch's future iterations of Outbreak, they'll incorporate more LTMs that we probably couldn't have expected based on community feedback. What I don't understand is people who do want an actual round-based system or a round based LTM for Outbreak, how would that really work because of how bigger the regions are in Outbreak compared to any round based experience? Would there just be a couple of zombies on round one? You have to go across the entire region to find them and then once you kill the, what, seven to ten zombies, then the round changes? I mean, I guess it would be fine if it just progresses over time and you just get more and more zombies spawn in in these bigger regions, then you can choose to warp if you want to. That could work maybe, but it does seem kind of pointless. I mean, the surges we have in Outbreak are kind of like rounds anyway. It'll move when you warp, and you kind of get unlimited zombies for a good amount of time until you do all the objectives or world events. So I'm not sure if that's an LTM I would pick for Outbreak, at least in my opinion. And one quick thing I'll add about Outbreak altogether. I mean, I really don't care about the debate between what is better, Outbreak versus Round Based. I'm just accepting that, yeah, this is probably the future of the mode. And if I'm going to play future Call of Duties that have zombies in it, then this is probably what we're going to be seeing, but on a much bigger scale in the future. It doesn't matter what you like more. It really does not matter. No one cares. But I think a really common criticism of Outbreak that doesn't make much sense to me is that, oh, it reuses fire team maps. It it's recycled content, and I'm not going to go into a 10-minute lecture about how Zombies is built on reused content. You have to remember the circumstances this game was developed under to understand why assets were reused. But does any real hardcore Zombies fanatic really play Fireteam or multiplayer for that matter? Probably not. I know I do because I play everything and I love multiplayer to death in Cold War. But for someone that just plays Zombies only, do you play Fireteam enough to really say, wow, you know, it's hard for me to play Outbreak now because I just played these maps a couple of minutes ago in multiplayer. If the player count was low for Fireteam to begin with, then what reason would there be to not reuse those maps for Outbreak? 
And on top of that too, would it have made much of a difference if they just went ahead and made some big generic world or this big generic open experience from Russia or Germany or something similar to the ROM-based maps we already have. But last and definitely not least, I did want to mention the possibility of seeing an Eddie bundle at some point in Season 6. Fajardi came up with some wonderful concept arts of how a Zykov bundle would look. I know we're going to get a conclusion to his character in the final round base map, whether he's alive or not, whether he's even real, whether it's Forsaken pretending to be him. Lots of possibilities of what happens with him, but what about Eddie himself? I mean, I think there's enough evidence so far, which I've gone over in a previous video, that Eddie is the director. And if Nolan North does voice Eddie for Cold War, then Activision would definitely want to bank on a quote-unquote Richtofen operator pack for Cold War. Whether it's through multiple bundles, whether it's just through one, it's going to sell like hotcakes. I think a lot of the zombies-themed bundles in this game have sold very well and definitely over in Warzone. So I see it being a missed opportunity if they don't sell a Eddie director pack. I don't see why they wouldn't. I'm assuming we'll get a full character model for him in a cutscene for the last round base map. We get a reveal of who the director is in the intro cinematic slash reveal trailer for the map. I can't wait to see what they end up doing with this. Now that is about it. This has been DK Dynamite. Leave all your thoughts down below in the comments section. What are your thoughts on the trailer and marketing schedule for the final round base map? What do you think the map name even is, right? Let's throw around some ideas down below in the comments. And also, what are your thoughts on this map exploring some old Ether lore and nostalgia with maybe a Sophia cameo? You never know. Really hope you've enjoyed and peace out, everyone.